I'm going to time travel and enter the Landscape Artist of the Year Season 1, and you can too. Let's get started. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. We are going to pretend today. We are going back to 2015, and I am going to enter the Landscape Artist of the Year competition, the episode where they paint the estuary, which was egregious to me. <laughs> the people that they chose as the winners, were I was so offended that uh, I, I didn't actually cry, but I sure wanted to. So I'm going to attempt the estuary myself. I downloaded the picture from the internet, and let's see if I can do any better or even come close to what people did. Again, I'm painting inside my studio. I'm pretending that I'm outside because they're all, they're all, it was a particularly horrible day. Not, not by English standards, I guess, because they're near the English Channel and that means a lot of weather gets blown up. And so it went from being sunny to being rainy and cold and almost snowy. I mean, it looked like, you know, if I was painting there, I would have frozen to death and not been able to concentrate for one second. So I give these people a lot of credit, but I want to see how I do. So let's get started and let's see how I measure up. But first we have to time travel back to 2015. And time travel across the ocean. Okay. So here's the scene as I downloaded it from the internet and you can cut this up probably Oh, a multitude of ways. I can see so many compositions in this particular piece. And do remember, they are, for the most part, even though the winner of this heat did a piece that was very small, smaller than the one that I'm actually going to paint, but most people were working in a larger for format, at least uh, 26 by 30 inches. So they had a lot more real estate to cover than I did. So, And they had weather to contend with, and there's cameras around them, and oh my gosh, it must be absolutely... Uh, Fright, uh, I'm not not frightening as much as it would just mess with my concentration. You know, there's so many things that would uh, interrupt your train of flow and your your ability to strategize. So the first thing I do is decide. I cut up the composition. I know I want a square. I love a square. If you watch this channel, you know how much I love a square. And I'm putting in some color to react to it first. Putting in the sky. The sky almost reads as white. Um, but again, I'm not, you know, I never match the picture to the photograph because that's, that's, that's a losing proposition always. So instead, what I'm trying to do is just remember some basic principles of a limited palette, mixing all my colors from each other so that they're cohesive, remembering to find my darks and my lights and midtones and having a good ratio of those, making sure that anything in the very far background, oh my... <laughs> That's the first time that ever happened to me. It flew by, but I was working with a paintbrush, and it, uh, is it this one? No, I think in a second. Anyway, what, I put it in the water, and it, it separated. I, and all I came out with was a stick. So uh, it's time to break in a new brush. Now, in all fairness to that brush, I probably used it for about five years, so that's fair. I probably could glue it, but I think it's time for a new brush. So I like to use as few strokes as possible because that's what I like to do. Um, knowing that this is a watercolor, probably... Like most watercolorists in this competition, you're just discounted from the very start. You know, watercolor is never really treated as if it's real painting. It's somehow it's seen as a lesser class of citizen, but that, that doesn't bother me. It's my, my first love, so I'm going to do it. Now I'm um, putting in the few darks that I did see and trying to just enhance some relationships. We're flying through this because the whole point of this was just to see, I wanted to pretend and see what would I do if I had to paint on that day? Um, and, and, you know, there would have been interruptions and things, but still, I just wanted to see, because it's fun. And then everything was sort of too flat and not dynamic, so I decided to throw some shapes in the sky, because if you want, you know, that's kind of what I do. I guess you could say that's a little bit of my style. But I do think that's part of what painting is, is actually showing some gestures. So there's my final piece. Now you can screen grab the photograph from earlier in this video and do it yourself and join me in this time travel and pretend episode of Landscape Artist of the Year. So remember to keep the white, your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. See you next time. Bye-bye.